Hello. During this video, we will discuss the challenges and dangers of drug use within the LGBTQ community. While substance use impacts all communities, LGBTQ people are disproportionately impacted by drugs and alcohol use. This doesn't mean that all LGBTQ people use drugs or alcohol in chaotic or problematic ways. It does mean that we desperately need more culturally attuned services and substance use education as we continue to fight for social equality. Some of that education includes how to reduce the harm of risky activities. Here is an example of high-risk activity known as chemsex. Chemsex involves using drugs to enhance sex. Usually, people do it to change the physical sensations they have during sex. This increases pleasure and their ability to have sex for longer, improves their confidence, or removes inhibitions. Chemsex can last for many hours at a time and often with multiple sexual partners, for example, at parties. But it also can involve a couple or lone masturbation. Using alone carries its own dangers because of drugs possibly contaminated with fentanyl. So having naloxone on hand and communicating your plan with someone you trust is very important. Chemsex is most common within the LGBTQ plus community, but straight people often use drugs and alcohol to enhance sex too. There can be sexual health and other risks for them as well. The three most popular drugs used during chemsex are GHB, also known as G or Gina, Mephadrone, known as meth, or meow, and crystal meth. They're taken on their own or together with alcohol or other drugs such as cocaine or ecstasy. Poppers are a class of inhalants sold as video head cleaners or nail polish remover. Many people within the LGBTQ community use poppers during sex or masturbation. They create a head rush, hypersensitivity, and make it easier to be penetrated during sex. Because of how they affect the cardiovascular systems, they're especially risky for people with heart conditions and should never be taken with erectile dysfunction medications. Many street drugs these days are contaminated with fentanyl. So carry naloxone and knowing how to use it is very important if you or someone you know uses these drugs. Chemsex drugs change how you feel and behave. When you mix them with sex, you increase your risks of HIV and sexually transmitted infections in a number of ways. With fewer physical inhibitions, you're less likely to use condoms, even if you intended to beforehand. During a long session, you might forget to take your pre-exposure prophylaxis medication, also known as PrEP, making you more vulnerable to HIV if you're not using condoms. If you're living with HIV, you might forget to take your HIV medication, which helps keep you undetectable and prevent you from passing HIV onto your partners. You may have sex with strangers, such as people you've hooked up with through social media or the internet, and you may have sex with multiple partners. This increases your chances of exposure to HIV and other sexually transmitted infections. You may have rougher sex than usual because of the numbing effects of drugs like GHB. The thin lining of the rectum is easily damaged or torn during anal sex, increasing the risk of HIV infection and other STIs. You may inject mephadrone or crystal meth with shared needles, increasing your risks of both HIV and hepatitis C infection. The drugs used in chemsex also have other health risks. It's easy to take too much GHB. This can cause you to pass out leaving you more vulnerable to sexual assault. Remember, whatever the circumstances and whatever drugs you have taken, sexual assault is never acceptable and is never your fault. Chemsex drugs change how you feel sometimes in unwanted ways. They can make you confused, paranoid, or frightened, and in some cases, you can lose touch with reality and have very convincing hallucinations. It is also common for people to have a come down after chemsex sessions where they feel depressed or low. While most people are familiar with overdoses from opioids, you may not know that you can also overdose on many other drugs. Overdosing on stimulants such as crystal meth may be referred to as overamping. Some signs and symptoms of overamping include racing heart, profuse sweating, 
chills, headache, anxiety, feeling of panic, hallucinations, and obsession. Someone who is spun out on crystal meth may be on the verge of overamping. This type of overamping can lead to interpersonal violence, injury, heart attack, stroke, seizures, and death by overheating. If you're overamping, you should drink lots of water and remember to breathe. Dim the lights and move to a quiet space. Take a walk or have a warm shower. Try to focus on the physical contact by massaging yourself or having someone do it for you. Think about getting checked out at a medical provider you trust after you come down. If you suspect a life-threatening situation, call 911 immediately. Let's look out for each other. Connection and community is our antidote.